Now then, Essex County Council, they run a Facebook community group. Uh, they wanted to attempt to reach residents who had ignored previous messages in regard to the pandemic. But a council paid an internet prankster nearly half a million pounds to run a Facebook page during the pandemic to engage the local community. He is a self-professed anti-Tory who con was contracted by the Conservative-controlled Essex County Council to run this community group. Uh, he was paid £493,000 in 34 instalments by the Cash Drop Council, which announced on Tuesday that council tax was being raised by 5% after significant financial pressures. If you're in the area of Essex County Council and this is news to you and you think about it perhaps the way I do, or maybe you don't, maybe you think it's a wonderful use of taxpayers' money, give me a call 0344 499 1000. Well, one woman who knows all about how local government works is Jackie Weaver. Uh, she is the Chief Officer of Cheshire Association of Local Councils and she has the power. Jackie, you're very welcome to the programme. What do you make of this? Hello, Peter. I'm with you. I mean, if they'd asked me, I, I definitely would have done it for last. <laughs> yes, and probably been a lot funnier than this person. Why on, earth <laughs> is a kind. Why on earth is a council paying this amount of money, do you think? I think one of the problems is, it's like everything else to do with local government, people don't understand how it works. And so, on the one hand, it seems like, you know, cash strap council... Why didn't they spend it on, I don't know, housing the homeless or potholes or something like that? But the way local government funding comes, often it is ring-fenced. So it comes from, some of it comes from central government, and you cannot spend it on the local priorities. And perhaps sometimes you end up spending it on perhaps vanity projects. And this goes to kind of like the more serious point, which is we keep saying that actually local councils, local government is better placed to decide how to spend its money rather than having it given ring-fenced by central government. But even if it was ring-fenced, um, perhaps it could have been spent on something else. I mean, maybe this was to encourage people to, I don't know, follow COVID restrictions or to be happy. Uh, one resident of uh, Essex Council wrote, I can't believe this. When families are struggling to pay their way through life, believing we are all in this together, clearly we are not. Joe Ventry from the Taxpayers' Alliance said, wasting taxpayers' money like this is no laughing matter. Essex Council owe it to local households to crack down on waste and focus funds on frontline services. And if you are living in that area and your council tax is about to go up by 5%, which, OK, is just above the rate of inflation, but still quite high, um, you're, this has got to stick in the crawl. I, I mean, I totally get that. Um, and as I say, I, it's not for me to defend um, Essex County sure? Council. Absolutely. Uh, they're big enough and bad enough to do it themselves. But I do have some sympathy for local councils that find themselves trapped in the news like this, when actually they may have been trying to do something that we just kind of don't get, like maybe this was the last-ditch attempt at communicating with hard-to-reach groups, or on the other hand, maybe it was just that they had some money left over and they hadn't got the ability to spend it in the areas that most of us would think were more important. Should say Simon Harris has told the Essex Live website the page was also utilised by local NHS services to amplify their own messages about yeah. a variety of topics. And this has continued to the present day and Essex Council said uh, we had an established relationship with Simon Harris as, an, as a contractor. This piece of work was vital in getting to the heart of communities in Essex and was particularly important during the pandemic when information had to be delivered at speed. Uh, apparently the comedian has now deleted his social media accounts. That's bad. Yes. <laughs> he yes. clearly is getting some kickback on that, isn't he? I would say but, so. I it, mean, if somebody offers you the money, it's very hard to say no. I don't it's want it's to a bit it. like uh, it's a bit like old uh, Keir Starmer being offered the private jet by the Qatar government. I mean, are you are you going to go Ryanair or are you going to take the private jet? Um, Jackie, thank you, Jackie Weaver, their chief officer of Cheshire Association of Local Councils. Harry Phipps is local government editor of Conservative Home. Harry, what do you make of this? Harry, I can't hear you. I can't hear Harry. Can we put his... Harry Phibbs? Oh, I think he's muted himself. We'll see if we can get him back. Um, and uh, Chris in Newbury has been in touch on this on text. He says, why didn't the local council give the money back? Jackie explains exactly why local government is a disaster. It spends money when it doesn't need to because it has it in its budget. She just admitted local council will, will waste money rather than give it back. I'm not sure Jackie said exactly that, but certainly if it is ring fence, that is something that they uh, will feel they have to do. Now, Harry Phipps is back. He's local government editor at Conservative Home. What do you make of this? I think it's a bit of a scandal, Harry. What do you think? Oh, it's an absolute scandal, and I don't think there's any any excuse for, uh, for it at all. Even if it was um, ring fenced for some some specific uh, uh, 
COVID help. I mean, the only thing I would say is I'm not surprised by it. I mean, these things, when they're particularly absurd and particularly outrageous, tend to attract the interest of the media. But in all sorts of boring ways, um, uh, money is money is being wasted. You know, occasionally I put in freedom of information requests on things like the number of press officers that um, councils have, the number of uh, number of diversity officers. The amount, and quite an important one actually, is the amount of surplus property that they hoard, surplus land and, 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 and buildings that are left empty, which could be released um, to provide housing, which would, first of all, help cut local authority debt and the and therefore the interest bill, which is paid for by council taxpayers, but also, of course, um, provide much needed housing. So I think we do need to get more accountability, more, more transparency in, um, in, in local government. It is unfair on council taxpayers. One thing to mention, actually, is you, that, that 5% increase in council tax in Essex, that's the most they can increase it without having a referendum. And, and one thing I think would help would be if we had tougher rules that if councils want to waste all this money and then, but then say that they're cash-strapped and need a council tax increase, that they need to get consent for that through a, through a referendum. So I think, I think a tougher approach is needed. Yes, indeed. And the, if your council tax is going up anyway, and there are so many things. I mean, councils are asked to do a lot of things, Harry, aren't they? And do you think the government has pre perhaps, I mean, this is an extreme example, and, and I don't think they should have done it. I don't think they should have paid a comedian any money to have done this. Um, but at the same time, there are a lot of councils who have been asked to do more and more by government over the past, well, I don't know, 10, 15 years, uh, because central government wants to do less or to, you know, during austerity, for example, local councils were given a lot more responsibilities and statutory responsibilities, stuff they have to do. Yes, I, I don't think that, I don't think that uh, local government's necessarily worse than other parts of the public sector. I mean, obviously, they're quangos that are completely unaccountable. We've, we've seen a lot of money wasted in the, in the NHS and lots of central government uh, failings in terms of the, the level of um, officialdom and, and, and procurement failings and all the rest of it. Uh, so I think that that's, that, that would be um, a, uh, a, valid, a valid point. But, uh, I mean, it, wherever you turn, I mean, for example, potholes is obviously something which is an important role for, for local government, but they fail to, to, to take advantage of the new technology. I mean, JCB have got a, a machine that, um, that, that, that gets the potholes done much faster without needing as many people. Uh, so, so far better uh, value for money, but most councils are still just using the old-fashioned um, methods. So, that, so, so there's, there's a inertia about actually, actually innovating and a, 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 a sort of indifference, really, to, uh, to, 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 to value for money. If it, was, if it was people's own money, they wouldn't be wasting it in this way. Yes. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think people are, people are entitled to be angry about it and by the way it's, I'm particularly embarrassed that this should be a, a conservative council. Conservative councils in particular shouldn't be wasting money on these woke um, vanity absurdities. I think a lot of people will agree with you. Harry Phipps, local government editor at Conservative Home, thank you very much indeed for joining us this afternoon. Appreciate that.